In this video, you will understand everything about logging in Python. And the idea is to apply these principles to understand the logging in Scrapy. And one more thing to note here that these videos are part of my course on Scrapy. So you may find the audio and video little bit different because I'm combining two different videos. So without further ado, let's get started. So logging is very important whenever you are working with Scrapy. So you won't be using print statement that often. And why do we need logging at the first place? So let's begin with that. So first of all, why not just use print statement? What's wrong with print statement? So actually, the print statements are made for something else. Print is made for end users. They are not meant for developers. So you will do something like print username, something like that. So typically what you will be doing is you will be writing some brief messages whenever you are working with print state. If you want to handle some kind of file writing error, you will write something like print cannot write to file, something like that. So there is no detailed information available like where is this error originating from? So what is the exact line number that is causing this problem? These kind of things you will not write in the print statement. And lastly, you cannot turn off or control the print statement during the runtime. So if you want, once you have written the code, you have used print statements, every time you run that code, those print statements will be printed on the console. You have no control over it. And one more thing, you cannot send that output to a file very easily. And that's why we have a very useful module and useful concept called logging. So logging is actually for developers, it's not for end users. And what is the main purpose of logging? Logging is used for tracking events. So what kind of events that we are talking about? So maybe we are talking about debugging code. We are talking about normal operations. Then we are talking about some warnings. And then finally we are talking about reporting some errors. And these errors can themselves be of two types of errors. These can be recoverable errors. So you can do something about these errors but they still needs to be reported and then the program can move on. And then we have fatal errors that cannot be recovered and the program has to terminate. In case of scrapy or web scraping, if the internet connection is not available, then of course it is a fatal error. You have to terminate your spider. And one more limitation of the print statement was there was no levels. So there was no information about the levels. So logging has conveniently five different levels. So the first level is debug. So debug is for a detailed information. So typically they are of interest only when there is some problem and, and the developer is diagnosing that problem. Then we have info messages. So info messages are just the usual things and they are just confirmation messages. Then and there are warnings. So and it may be used to indicate some kind of problems that can occur in near future. For example, that database is full or the disk is full. But so far, the software is still working. Your code is still working as expected. Then we have two levels of error. So first one is conveniently called error. And now this is a problem and there is something which is not happening correctly. But still it is used for in the cases where program can still recover from that error. And finally, we have critical. So this is a serious error the program has to terminate and the perfect example in case of web scraping programs is when the internet connection is not available. So that is, this is a critical error. Just print a message in your logs and terminate the program. In this video, we are going to work with the logging modules which is available in Python. We'll learn how to customize this logging and this will help us understand what is happening with that long scrappy logging output. So all the logging functionality is inbuilt and it is available in the logging module of Python. Now, as we talked that logging has multiple levels. So let me show you how these messages look by default without any changes. So let's run this and see how it looks. So we have a message that uh, warn is deprecated. So we should be using warning. So let's run it again. And here we can see that the debug and info messages, these are not at all printed. So why these are not printed? So these are not printed because by default, the logging level starts from warning and above. 
so only warning and more serious problems they are printed so this is python default let's also look at the formatting of the messages so first of all we have the logging level so this is warning this is critical this is error and we have the source so in this case the source is root because this is the root module that we are working with so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to call one method and this one is logging dot basic config all right now this basic config can take a lot of parameters we'll start with all the parameters one by one and we will build over it the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to set the level because remember that this debug was not printed so we are setting the level to logging dot debug and note that this is in all capital so this time if i run it now we have all the messages if i set it to let's say error now this time we have all these available and here we can set it to warn or warning these are both the same thing so let's keep it to debug so that all the messages are printed so this is the first level of customization the second level of customization is about these messages the format of these messages themselves okay so let's send one more argument and this one is format so this is supposed to be a string and there are certain res keywords and these keywords are in this format percent and then the brackets and then s and this is where you provide the keywords so the first one is very obvious so this is the message so now we are saying that we, the only thing that we want to be printed is message so if i run it now you can see that all the extra information is now gone the only thing that we have is message so obviously this is not going to be very useful so let's continue adding more and more information to this format so that we get more useful logging so the first thing that we are going to use is the level so how do we use the level so again percent brackets s so the keyword that we need to use is level name so right now if i run it now we have simply debug and you can see that we left a space here so that's why there is a space here if you put a colon here we will see that we have a colon here if you put lot of spaces we'll see lot of spaces so this way we can customize exactly what we want so now what we are going to do is we are going to step by step we are going to change this format so that it matches the format outputted by scrappy so let's continue adding more and more information now let's get the time so time is also very critical so the time can be printed using the keyword asc time all right so now if i just run it like that the default format will be used and it is printing to the millisecond we can use it just like that or we can customize it further if we want to customize this time then what we can do is we can add one more argument and this one is called date fmt now this expects formatter string which is in the standard python strf time format okay we can use let's say percent y and this will only print the year so let's build it up like that all right so let's uh, add more information so we are putting m for month then dash and percent d for date so let's run it and see what we have done now we are printing year month and date all right let's add some more information percent h this is for time percent m colon percent s so this time we should have date and time format okay and one more thing that we can do is we can add square brackets right over here now if you want to put the source of this log message we can make use of one more keyword and this one is called name so if i just run it just like that now we can see that this root is printed so this root is not very useful so now we can go on and do one more level of customization so what we can do is we can change this name itself to change the format of the name what i can do is logging dot get logger so this i am storing in a local variable and when i say get logger this is where i need to pass the name so this is the name so for example in this one i am going to pass the directly the file name so now this logger contains this name so let me close everything and instead of logging dot debug what i'll do is like that so instead of logging dot whatever i'm going to call this logger object so now we can see that this is the source 
the source which was earlier root now it has changed so again what we have done we got this logger and we provided this name dynamically if you want to do something like this also we can do so we can get the file name but this is going to give you the entire file name so now you can see that this is the entire file name so this is appearing here as name so we can change it to something else let's run it and now we have this name here this asd is coming here as name now this makes sense uh, this is a useful debug message so now let's do one more thing so now that you understand how these logging messages are being built and how to read them so let's come here to the terminal and let's run this spider which we created earlier so scrappy run spider all codes dot py and this time try to understand what is happening what kind of messages are being printed so this is the timestamp so this is exactly the same timestamp that we had okay now here this source is in square brackets so let's make this change here so this name is in square brackets so this name is in square brackets and now we can see that this name is in square brackets then we have the level of the login so this is info so by default scrappy is going to print everything it is even going to print the debug messages as well so this is info and this is the message right so now again here we have info here we have debug so this is coming from the log the most important thing that you should be able to understand now is that now you can read these messages okay so this is the timestamp this is the source and this is a level message info and we can see that this is a long message this is another one with set levels info right so we have a debug message here and you can see that this message which is printed is actually for debugging only so let's run the same spider and this time we are going to supply one additional parameter dash l and this dash l let's say that this time we can set it to info so all the debug messages they will not be printed so if debug messages are not printed then we will not see all the data which was extracted right so this is one thing and then we can set it to warn so setting this to warning means that if something which requires your attention that will be printed otherwise everything will be sent out all right now this using this warning is much better than using this no log switch because in case of no log even if there is a warning error or fatal message nothing will be printed lastly i want to show you one more thing that you can send all this output to a file so if you just provide a file name here and let's say this is ex example dot log and this time if you run it you will see that there is nothing but if you look at the files we have this new file which is example dot log and all the messages are printed here if i run it again and again so i've run it three four times and you can see that nothing is overwritten every time it is appended editors like vs code they can actually differentiate between debug info warning error critical so you'll see that you will have the color coding as well so let's look at one more parameter so scrappy run spider all codes dot py and this time we are supplying log file parameter so let's set this log file to codes dot log and this time you will see that all the logging is going to codes dot log let's open this folder in vs code and here we can see that we have quotes dot log so l all the log messages have been redirected to this file so what is the benefit the benefit is that these messages are going to stay so you can always come back to these messages and examine them later and here you can see that this is line number 80 and if i run it again so now you can see that this has gone to line number 160 so it is appending and all these settings you can control using settings file which we will talk about when we talk about projects that's all about logging i'll see you in the next video